Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well and thank you for watching this clip on a polar plot. This is a well-known polar plot. It's a rose petal, so I thought it was appropriate to include a picture of a rose. Now, in order to plot this one, I'll show you quickly what, how I started and then we'll take a look at computer generated and maybe go from there. It's probably the better way to explain how to graph those ones. Okay, so how, what I started, this is pretty messy, so you had to bear with me a little bit. What I started with, I made a chart of, uh, since the three X's inside the cosine, I drew the cosine curve of three X, which is a regular curve. And then I said, well, if three X equal to zero, Okay, and then r equal to something, and then I calculated what theta is. The three theta, the reason I put a three theta is that it's a lot easier for me to pick special angles. Okay, because uh, if I pick theta equal 30, for example, then three times 30 I already got it to 90 degrees. So I don't have enough of the division in here. Now, uh, just a couple points here, we'll get the gist of what's going on, then we'll take a look at the cleaner picture. When theta equal to zero, Okay, so then that's cosine of three times zero, which is one, and then two times one is two. So there's a point here when theta equal to 10 degrees. Okay, then it's cosine of three times 10, which is 30. Cosine 30 is radical three over two, and then times two, so I have 1.732 uh, or radical three here. So on and so forth. So you can see this curve start taking a shape. Okay, and then between the 30 degree to 90 degrees, it was a little struggling because the cosine is a um, cosine three theta is a negative value. So the petal actually came down to this side. It doesn't stay on this side. It came down here. And then from 90 degrees to 150 degrees, the petal went up. Okay, so roughly the shape took over there. And then let's take a look a closer look at what how we arrive at each one of the points. Like I said earlier, it's much easier to start with the cosine of three theta as a variable, and then three theta as your special angle over here. Let me move down a little bit. And then I calculated r, and then from there I wrote theta. Okay, so this one is r as a two, and theta is zero. That's an easy one. Uh, 30 degrees here. Okay, so radical three over two times two because it's two times cosine theta. And then this one gives you theta equal to 10 degrees. Okay, so this is my first angle over here. And when theta equal to 30 degrees, well, maybe let's draw the curve here. Okay, so this is the cosine of three theta. When three theta equal to 90 degrees, I have a zero. Okay, so if three theta equal to 90, then theta equal to 30 degrees. So here's my three theta. Okay, so three theta, I have the 10 degrees, and draw a little thing over here. This is about 1.732, so it's radical three and theta is equal to 10 degrees. Okay. Now when you get a theta equal to 30 degrees, here's 90, three theta is 90 degrees, and then r equal to zero, which means theta equal to 30 degrees. So this is the first zero. So as we started over here, the curve start moving this way, all the way when theta equal to zero. Now next thing is a very interesting thing here. Okay, it took me a while to figure it out, so let me explain it, what happens. When, th um, let's draw our curve again. Here's my cosine of three theta. I keep on dragging the three theta out, is because cosine three theta is what's really interesting for us. That determines which one the r is, whether it's positive or ne negative. Okay, when three theta equal to 90 degrees, all the way to 270 degrees, this is 180 degrees. In this chunk, as you can see, cosine of three theta is less than zero if three theta is between 270 degrees and 190 degrees. I'm running out of room over here. Which equivalently, theta is between 30 degrees 
to 90 degrees. Okay, so that's the section I just outlined over here in gray. In this section, when theta is between 30 to 90 degrees, the R value is negative. That's why the curve is actually flipped. Okay, so for example, when theta equal to 60 degrees, oh, my angle is off a little bit. You know, bear with me here. Theta equal to 60 degrees, 3 theta is 180, and cosine of 180 is minus 1. So therefore, there's this little dot over here. When theta is equal to 60 degrees, r is, absolute value of r is actually equal to 2. So technically, r equal to minus 2. That's why at 60, you don't put r on this side, but you put a minus 2, which is flip 180 degrees. That's why it's a minus 2. So here is the r theta equal to 60 degrees. So the curve went from here all the way over here, and this is symmetrical. It goes up. That's the when theta between 60 to 90 degrees, all the way to 0 when theta is equal to 90 degrees, okay? So, so far, we got it around the circle this way. Now, over here, as we keep on moving around, when theta equal to 120 degrees, we got a, a better, 120 degrees, we have a, a r equal to 2. We get another maximum over here. And then the theta goes up, word this way and then come down back as you increase the angle and finish it up at 150 degrees. When theta equal to 150 degrees, you'll have a cosine of 450. I'm punching it in, make sure I do have a zero. So when theta equal to 150, you're coming back to zero over here. Okay, so that's how we plot this uh, rose polar plot. I hope it's clear clear for you. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pei making learning math fun, at least trying to. If the video has been helpful, I would appreciate a comment or thumb up. Until next time, have a confident day.